Oh my gosh, Salem walked the red carpet. That is the most adorable, I mean, uh, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, chilling adventures, let's do this. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another spooktastic edition here of A Week in Geekdom. I am your host, Jermaine Menendez, and today we're going to be talking about Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Now, in honor of the Netflix series, I decided to finally read uh, this book, this uh, cool, dramatic, serious interpretation of Sabrina. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Archie world, if you will. Overall, I, it's not really my thing. I never really cared for it. But I do like the character of Sabrina, and I do remember uh, the uh, uh, live-action series, and I do remember, I think, cartoons and the old comic book strips or whatever and they were always pretty fun so i was very interested in reading a much more serious dramatic interpretation or reinterpretation i guess of this character now everybody's in there from hilda zelda uh, uh salem and some new characters as well that expand the mythology or the world of sabrina spellman with uh them living in greendale and all that stuff. The basic plot, you don't have to worry. It's very reader friendly. You get an introduction to Sabrina's dad, Edward, and he broke witch law, the, the covenant of witches or whatever, is very upset that he married a mortal. They're not supposed to do that. They're not supposed to mingle that way. And uh, Sabrina's mom wants to take the infant with her and raise her uh, normally, but Edward is opposed to that because uh, she has to uh, be a, a witch and all that funky jazz and eventually uh, he succeeds they put the mom away and the character of Edward takes the daughter and his sisters Zelda and Hilda end up raising Sabrina uh, through the 50s I believe the story began in 1951 and then the main focus of it is in the 60s when Sabrina is about to turn 16. Now when witches and I guess warlocks as well turn of age uh, 16 or 15 or whatever they go through a ritual which I guess prolongs their life and they get accepted into witchdom. I, I don't know. I don't make the rules but they have two options. You can go ahead and do the ritual or you can uh, disregard it and continue your way into uh, or with humanity but eventually your powers weaken to the point where you lose everything and forget everything and you die like a regular human being. Now Sabrina being a half-breed, she has to make this decision. Her family, specifically her aunts, are pushing for her to do the ritual and embrace her uh, powers and, and which uh, culture? I Something. And along the way we do get to see some new characters we get to see uh her cousin uh show up and, and they're living with uh the spellmans in in greendale we get to see salem which is one of my favorite characters in this franchise and we get to see an actual villain for sabrina the character is uh, madam satan one of the creepiest uh villains uh, you see her in the back cover right there because she's got baby skull demon thingies for eyes and she's sort of like this witch slash succubus. And I won't spoil it, but she's after the Spellmans for a very specific reason that is born out of hatred, jealousy, and love. Because those are the perfect ingredients to create a villain. Uh, along the way, Sabrina falls in love and you have this moral dilemma of how to keep a normal social life in school while also venturing into the occult craziness. It's pretty interesting. It's a more dramatic, grounded, serious take on the character. There are jokes. There are. Uh, there is a little bit of humor sprinkled throughout. But for the most part, is a very. It is a very character-heavy piece on Sabrina and the trials and tribulations of a famous character, dealing with groaning, uh, dealing with growing up and witchdom. If that appeals to you, then this book is for you. Now the art is a little bit of a controversy. Some people like it, other people hate it, other people are sort of in between. That's where I fit in. I'm in between 
the two sides. Like, uh, the art is done by Robert Hack. Same with uh, Afterlife with Archie. That uh, Francisco Francavilla does the whole thing. Uh, Robert Hack is involved with the whole creative, artistic uh, side of things, I should say. He draws and colors and everything in between. And the art, for the most part, I do like it. But on some panels, on some occasions, like you'll get like a fully detailed rendering of a character. And then the following or a couple uh, boxes later, you get some wacky derp faces that I can't really explain how they got through to the final product of the book I'm reading right here. But I guess uh, they didn't really mind. But it's such a contrast. It's so heavy that I'm sitting there like, wow, okay, like, you get art, I don't know if you can see it, can be very inconsistent. Like, for example, up here, look at Serena right there, and then look at her down below. She's much more refined and detailed. By the way, here's a creepy-ass look at Madam Satan. I'm not joking around, man. This stuff gets wild and heavy pretty quickly. You get stuff like this. The, the art here is really cool. I love like the pastel colors and the. Uh, it looks like I'm reading a vintage story, like it came out of 1962. But then all of a sudden, probably spoiling it, but like check this thing out. Pretty freaky. And then you get boo, <laughs> derpy uh, Madam Satan right there looking all kinds of loopy. I don't know if it's focusing or not, but you get the picture. It's stuff like that that makes it a little bit inconsistent in my honest opinion. This is actually one of my favorite covers for uh, chapter three. I love this issue. Look at uh, Sabrina right there. Just different faces overall, like subtle hints uh, between uh, the same issue that I go like, really? Okay, QC issues much? But uh, regardless, it's a really, it's a really pretty book to look at. I love the sketchiness of it and and how old it looks. If you like the supernatural, if you want a different adaptation for a character you uh, grew up with, I think you may or may not like it. I specifically don't really mind that much and thought this was a pretty cool take on uh, Sabrina Spellman and her wonderful cast of characters. Now there are cameos from Riverdale, which is pretty interesting. This is, and by the way, I didn't say anything at the beginning of the video, but this book is not really related to Afterlife with Archie. There are subtle Easter eggs here and there, but for the most part, this is in the 60s and Afterlife with Archie is a different interpretation in the 2014, 15, something like that. Uh, so yeah, they're totally different and just just a blast to read man If you're looking for something spooky to read that's not too scary or Freaky and just the right amount of cool ish um, Then yeah, I think uh, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina might be that book for you guys also back section features uh, variant covers we also see uh, an expose on Madame Satan the villain for this first book or for the series actually, as well as the reprint of her first appearance way back in, I believe it was uh, 1941, there we go, 1941, Pep Comics number 16. That's a long ass time ago. There is a lot of over uh, expose and, and narration that I wasn't too fond of, uh, I don't know, uh, I believe that is uh, Roberto's writing style because he does that on occasions with uh, Afterlife with Archie and the TV shows that he's written. I, I do believe he writes uh, Riverdale and all that stuff. So uh, at, at times it, it got a little under my skin. I, I didn't need to read so much explanation for what the characters were doing. And the art is sketchy and inconsistent and that might deter you from actually uh, enjoying the full experience or whatever. But overall, it's really fun and really spooky and a fantastic reimagining of a beloved character. I cannot wait to finish this series in like a hundred years from now because this was released a long ass time ago. The series is on an infinite hiatus that will never ever end. I don't know. Maybe if this video gains, gains some traction, they'll be like, hey, we should put out more uh, comics so we can collect it in trade paperbacks. I don't know.
Guys, what do you think about Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? And if you are going to watch the Netflix series, it's pretty much uh, uh, based on this comic book. Uh, let me know down below what you thought of the Netflix series when it debuts. So yeah, follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that jazz. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow me here at A Week in Geekdom on YouTube. Thank you so much. I will catch all of you at a later time. Bye.